Hello everybody, welcome to Embedded ARM Dev. In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to creating static libraries and linking into them when compiling a program. First, let's talk about what a library is. So a library is simply a collection of objects that are made available for use by other programs. There are two types of libraries, static and shared. In this video, we will be discussing static libraries. With GCC, the static libraries use the extension A. The A stands for archive. So you might use a static library when you have a set of well-developed functions that aren't likely to change often, such as an API that you want to use often in your project. So you can just compile it and put it in your project lib directory and then link into it. You might also use it if you simply want to create a library and distribute it for other developers to use. And again, the static library might also be provided to you by a third party. and You may not have access to the source code, only the compiled binary. When compiling, anything linked in from a static library is compiled directly into the final object. One disadvantage to this is that any changes made to the static library would require any program that links into them to be recompiled in order to include the changes. One advantage to static libraries is that it doesn't need to reside on the target platform in order for the executable to run. To create a static library, we use the AR command. The CR stands for create or recreate. So if the library doesn't exist, it'll create it, and if it does exist, it'll write over it. By convention, libraries start with lib. Also, it's necessary to create a .h header file to define the prototypes for library functions. The header file is included in any source code that links into the library. To link with a static library when compiling, we use the lowercase l option followed by the name of the library. Remember that the lib is dropped from the name of the library when using the lowercase l option. Use the capital I option to specify any non-standard include directories. Use the capital L option to specify any non-standard library directories. So now we're going to do some practical demonstrations for compiling static libraries and for linking into static libraries. All right, so here we are on my Ubuntu Linux VM, and I've created a really simple little project uh, that will help us illustrate how to create a static library and then link into it. So let me show you what I've created here. Uh, so the first thing is I have two C files that are going to be the static library. The first one is add numbers. And so looking at this, it's a very simple function. You pass in two numbers and you simply return the sum of those two numbers. Okay. And then sub numbers is basically the same thing, except you, you return the difference between those two numbers. So these are overly simplistic functions uh, that you probably wouldn't actually put in a library, but they're just to demonstrate how the static libraries are created and linked into. So they don't need to be too complicated. So these two functions right here in two separate files are what's going to actually compose the static library when we're done. Okay. And I want to also show you the... So this is the actual source file. So before we do that, um, let me show you the, so in, inside here you'll also notice that we have two directories. I have include and lib. This is actually pretty standard setup uh, when compiling on Linux. Um, the include directory is where you put your header file. Okay, so I'm oh, sorry, I need include. Let's include math test. Okay, so we want to look at this. So all you can see here is these are just the prototypes. These are just the prototypes for the two functions uh, that are defined in the C files that will make up the static library. Okay, so this is something if you create a static library uh, or, or a shared library for that matter, you do have to create an include file that has all of the functions and any global data that you know, variables, whatever that you want to expose as part of the API. Okay, and then the developer or the user who wants to use your library would have to include these header files in their projects in order to be able to get access to the functions. Okay, so all you need is the prototype. Okay, that's it. So that is inside the include directory. All right. And you also notice that I have a library directory which is currently empty. And that's where the 
um, any libraries would go, any libraries that you create, you would put them in that directory. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is actually compile uh, the source code for the static library into objects. Okay, so all we have to do is we'll call GCC and you pass it the C option. So remember the C option tells the compiler to compile into object files and then, but not to link it. So it stops just before the linking phase. So I'm gonna compile add numbers and sub numbers. And that's all you have to do. Okay, now if we list it, you'll notice that there's an add numbers object file and a sub numbers object file. Okay, so if I do file add numbers dot o, you'll see that it's a relo relocatable, which means it won't execute and it's something that needs to be linked in. Okay. So the next thing, now that we have these .o files, we're going to create an archive or a static library. So in order to do that, use the AR command, and then we pass in CR, which means create or recreate. So if it exists, it will recreate, it'll write over it. And if it doesn't exist, it'll create. So then the first argument is you want to, you want to pass it the name of the library. So by convention, libraries start with LIB. And then you give it the, the library name. So we're going to call ours math. There's already a math library called libm. We're just going to call this math. And then the dot a indicates that it's a static library or an archive. And then you just add the object files that you want to make part of this archive. And then you just enter. And that's it. So you see here we have libmath.a. Right here. So when I do a file on it, it says current archive. Okay. So if I do the AR command and I pass it the T option, it lists the table of contents basically. And I can list it and you see that these are the two object files that are into it, compiled into it. All right. So now we do want to move this into the lib directory because that's where libraries should go. So I want mv into the lib. Okay, so we see that it's in there. All right. So, uh, okay, so the one thing I didn't show you was the actual main program. And so you see here that this is, so right here, so all these are standard. Uh, we need these just for some of the things we're doing, you know, printf, uh, random, and uh, the time function. And so this right here is the header file that I created right here that includes the prototypes for the functions that are in the static library. So you need to make sure that this is included in your source code if you want to use these functions, okay? And right here, add numbers, and right here, sub numbers. You see that they're not really defined in this file. They're only defined in this in this right here. So if I were to comment this out, then it would never be able to resolve those. This is a real simple thing. It just generates two random numbers. Okay, this right here seeds it. It seeds the random, um, you know, it seeds the random number generator gets seeded by the current time. Uh, so that these are more, more random. Um, and then it calls add numbers and then just prints it. Okay, so it'll say, you know, a plus b equals whatever. And then it calls those same those same two numbers and it calls sub numbers. So it's a really simple program uh, just to demonstrate how it works. Okay. So the first thing we want to do to compile is you call GCC. Okay, so do math.c. And then we're going to call it do math. Now this is going to throw some errors. Okay, and we'll talk through them. So the first one is it says no such file or directory math test.h. So the reason this happened is because our header file is in a non-standard directory. So we need to tell the compiler where to look for the header files that we're looking at. So we can do that by adding the capital I file and then our, our header file is in the directory include in this in this local directory it's it's in include so now if I hit this it's going to give us another different error so when I do that 
it says undefined reference to add numbers and subnumbers. Okay, so this is because those functions, although they're defined in mathtest.h, uh, this linker is complaining. You can see right here that it, LD is the linker. So during the link phase, it can't find these two functions. And the reason is because we have to link into the library that we created, but we didn't tell the um, we didn't tell the compiler that. So we have to run it again, and then I'm going to come over here and put it here, and we're going to call the lowercase l option and let's pass it the math library. Okay. Remember this lowercase l option in in the command. The GCC command it has to come after all object files that need it. Okay, so make sure you don't you don't link into a um, a library before it occurs on the line in the, in the command line. Okay, so this is going to fail too for a different reason. Okay, so it's looking for math but it can't find it, and so the reason is is because it's in that library that we created is also in a non-standard directory. So we have to use the capital L to specify a non-standard library directory. And so that particular library is in our local directory under lib. So there. No errors this time. It compiled for us. And we see here that we have the binary. Okay. So I can execute it and it prints out the numbers. Okay, so one thing to note is these random numbers are pretty large, and then you're wondering why you know the plus maybe is resulting in a negative number. This is because uh, these are it's interpreting it as a signed integer, and these is causing an overflow, so it's it's becoming negative. That's why they're negative. So, but if I run it again, we might get different numbers. Um, but you can see that it's working. Okay. And then if I run file on do math, you know, we can see that, again, this, the reason it says shared object here, and, and if you haven't watched some of my other videos, because the default on GCC Linux is to compile executables to be position independent executables. So when file interprets those, when it reads them, it interprets them as shared objects. Okay. Um, if you wanted to compile it, to force it to be position non position independent you can pass it the no PIE option okay and then we call file again and it should be yeah so now it says executable okay so I would generally just let it you know let uh, I would go with the GCC default unless you have a very good reason for me making it non position independent executable um, anyway so one thing to note is that it does say dynamically linked here. And so we did create, we did link into a static library. This is true. However, if we look at our, our source, source code for do math, um, we have printf right here. Okay. We also have time, srand, and rand. Okay. So all those functions uh, do need to link into the standard library. Okay. The libc library. So one thing we can do is we can call readelf. Um, the A means read read everything, and we'll call that on do math, and we'll pipe it to grep and look for the thing shared. So now what we should see here is it need, it's looking for the libc library, but we shouldn't see anything about the math library, the one that we created. Okay, so there you can see that it's looking for libc. Okay. So there's nothing there's nothing saying that it's looking for uh, the static library that we created because all of the functions that we that were in that library that we needed that were part of our program get compiled directly into the do math binary so it contains those functions in it. Also, one thing we can do is uh, we can look at the size of it and it's 16 kilobytes so it's it's actually pretty small. Um, the functions that we compiled in from the static library were, you know, really easy. Uh, if it was a larger static library, then the site that would actually increase the size of it. But if we wanted to, we could compile it again. Okay, but this time we give it static. 
So what that would do is actually compile in the libc, the calls to printf and time and all those others would get compiled in. So it would be truly static. And so if we do that, so now we'll do do math. You see that it's statically linked. Okay, that means that there's no dynamic linking at all. And all of the all of the functionality that the binary needs in order to execute is inside the binary. So if we do the, um, let's go ahead and do a long listing. You see here it went up to 872 kilobytes uh, compared to what it was earlier, which was 16, right here, 16 kilobytes. So yeah, that's pretty big. And then another thing we can do is we can do our read off command, go back up. So here it should, it should report nothing because it's not dynamically linked anymore. All right, that's pretty much it for static libraries and linking into static libraries. All right, so let's summarize what we talked about in this video. This video was an introduction to static libraries. We gave a basic definition of what a static library is. We talked about some of the advantages and disadvantages, explained how to create a static library, and explained how to link into a static library. And that's the end of this video. So I hope you found it useful. Again, leave any questions or comments you have, and we'll see you in the next video.